All right, guys, let's take a look here. I want to talk about some stuff. Let's clean this up just a little bit. So, um, this is parts to the Iron Man suit I'm building, but I have a feeling that maybe some of you searched this video and you're not following that, and that's fine. Um, it's really cool, maybe you should subscribe and see it, but that's fine. Let me talk about what I did here. So this is a CNC router. Um, there is a DeWalt router right there. Um, can't recommend this brand, had a lot of trouble with them, but uh, there's a lot of machines like this one. So I built these standoffs. Um, if you type in my name, the name of my channel, which is my name, and, uh, the, and the word standoff, I think one word, um, you'll come up with how I made these. So essentially I had a plate, a solid plate sitting on top of this. And then I've of course machined in all like my major geometries using more traditional machining methods. Um, got in like all of these parts and stuff like that, drilled all the holes, did all that first. Then I came in with an eighth inch bit and got some of these tighter spots in here. Um, and then what I did is I'm using a quarter inch bit, I just went around it. Um, I did it in two passes actually because I wanted to put chamfers on them too. But when I cut through, I left all these tabs. And let me see if I can get you guys a good shot here. So like, that's one right there. There's a tab, there's a tab. Um, it's hard to see because the background's shiny. But uh, yeah, there we go. So these, these are tabs right here. That's a tab right there, that's a tab right there. And then all throughout this is how I did this. So I was able to cut these free, and then um, this is all tabbed together. And I gotta say, it's really strong, but I don't predict that I'm gonna have much trouble cutting this out. In fact, grab a pair of these. Let's just come over to a piece of junk that's not a real part here. And well, look at that, that one literally just wants to Okay, yeah, so that kind of proves my point right there, um, that these are not hard to take off. And uh, it's really cool, um, but in order to get this to work, I had to do some special stuff inside of Fusion 360. So let's go hop over on my computer and I'll show you what I did. Okay, this is what I'm building, by the way. I'm gonna tease you guys a little bit. Anyway, here we are on the shank, which is the lower part, and this is what I'm building over there. So this is my setup in Fusion 360, which you should be familiar with. And what I did is, um, there's a lot of drawings in here, so I'm going to point you towards the right ones, because there's a couple drawings for different things that I did, but the one for the tabs is I went in, I did a sketch, and I projected all the geometry that I was cutting out of this plate, and then I drew lines connecting each point um, to another part, and then also to where, if they left an island, were cut out here and left an island, those would also get cut in there. So... Um, I was accommodating both of those because you don't want your part to fly off when you're cutting these. Um, but you also don't want an island that you're making to fall off, twist in there, get stuck in the end mill, and break the end mill. Um, so both those, th both those things need to be accounted for. So then what I did is um, if we came in here and this is my massive amount of um, cam. So if we came in here and we went this is where I was cutting them free down here. So if I come in here and I hit edit so you can see what's happening, um, I'm going to go over to the geometries tab, make it to where you can see that, geometries tab, and then these are the contours that I have selected right here. So those are the parts I'm cutting out. Now I did these in multiple parts because my machine does not have servo motors, so it loses step over time. So in order to maintain accuracy, I don't run the machine for more than about 30 minutes. So you can see these are all like 20 minutes, um, uh, operations and then but they're all the same operation just multiplied a bunch of times and then I picked all the geometry in here oh and the other thing I did is as I was doing this I did the insides first and then went outside that's also important because you want to maintain your because I went out towards the bolts that are holding them down um, that way because that's where all the structure is so that's what I did so anyway come in here and then you're going to want to make sure you have tabs selected and then um, your tab width your tab height, those are what I used. I made them pretty wide because I end up cutting through and they end up being smaller anyway. And they make it much wider than they are at all. I would select triangle. Um, they taper in. And I would also lower your feed rate on a router too. Um, on feed per revolution, not your feed rate for linear feed rate. The machine can handle that just fine. But your feed per revolution, which is your plunge feed rate, um, that's this number right here, I would lower that. So anyway, um, come back into here and then or I'm sorry, into the geometry. You hit tabs, and then you select the points. 
and then I just come in here and I select all the points that are on the part that I'm doing and then I do that for every single one and then I'll make sure I have a bridge going between here. The problem is if you do um, by distance here, it just does them randomly um, and then they won't meet up. So if I do them here randomly, there's only a couple there because it's every two inches. But you would see even if you made a bunch of them, they wouldn't line up and then you would end up cutting them through on the other one and you'll actually see that if you do a simulation too. Um, so that's kind of how I did that. Well, that is how I did that and it worked really well. Um, I've had a lot of trouble with tabs. I knew it was a good process. And if you look at how machinist machine, it's like the number one way to machine on a, on a fifth axis machine. And the cool thing about a fifth axis machine is that you do it in one operation. Well, I did all these parts in one operation. And so I'm trying to, to take from the best um, machinists out there and apply them to my little crummy machine. And I'm getting pretty good results. So if you're watching this video and you're not just a fan of mine because of my Iron Man suit, but you found this video, uh, consider giving this a try because it, it worked really well and I'm really happy with it. All right, bye guys. Lighter. Lighter than it was. Look at that. That's pretty cool, huh? Whee!